Hey there, so no project this week, but I wanted to give you some sort of a video. I asked on Twitter and Facebook and on YouTube for questions to do a Q&A, and I got like way more questions than I expected. So I'm gonna try to go through as many of the questions as I can, and this video might be a little bit long. I apologize for that, but I really wanna to try to answer as much as I can. Now, if I don't answer your question, and you still want it answered, the best way to get in touch with me to ask it is through Twitter. I'm pretty active on Twitter, so be sure to follow me there if you wanna to talk to me or just see what I'm up to. I also post a lot to Instagram. So a lot of people asked about like how I got to where I am right now in my life, and just how I got to this career and everything. And I'll give you a really quick rundown, but I've talked about it a whole Whole lot on a podcast that I host with Jimmy Duresta and David Picciuto. It's called Making It. You might want to check that out if you're interested. All three of us talk about how we got to our current careers and like where we learn to make stuff. It's all covered in that podcast. We do that every week, so you might like that. So here's the very quick version of my story up to this point. I grew up in Kentucky. I made stuff my entire life out of Legos and out of cardboard and plywood and just whatever I could find. My dad was a dentist, but he always made a lot of stuff in his shop. One of my grandfathers was a contractor, so he had a shop and built a lot of stuff my other grandfather carves and paints and makes furniture and picture frames and all sorts of stuff. So I was around that stuff growing up. After high school, I moved to Savannah, Georgia. I went to art school for four years. When I graduated with a computer art degree, then I started teaching at the school for two quarters. While I was teaching at the school, I was starting a web design company in the background with a friend of mine. We did that company for six or seven years and then we sold it to an ad agency and then I worked there for six or seven years. Then I left there and I worked for Dell for five years. And in the last couple of years at Dell, I started doing YouTube on the side as a hobby. Mainly it was so that I could have uh, some time away from my family to be able to do some stuff for myself and just you know be able to get back in the shop and make some stuff YouTube was a pretty good excuse to do that over a couple of years It became something I was really passionate about and it was kept growing and kept growing in a way that I didn't really understand and it finally got to a point to where I didn't want to do my job as much as I wanted to do YouTube stuff anymore, and so I had to figure out how to make that transition. I'm not going to talk about all the ins and outs of how I actually did that, because it's like a big long story and a lot of information, but it took about a year for me to make that transition to be able to quit my job and go full time on YouTube and making my own content. So I think that covers everything up to here, except that in that time period, 14 years ago, I met my wife, we got married, now we have four kids. Yeah, that's. I think that's where we're at. Some of the other questions that I got a whole bunch, and I'm gonna kind of lump them all together into one answer. What kind of tools do you use? Like, what kind of table saw do you have? What kind of this do you have? What kind of that do you have? And what kind of camera do you shoot on? What kind of microphone do you use? What software do you use? All those things. I've got a page on my website. I like to make stuff.com slash tools, and you can go there and see a link to everything that I use. I try to keep that updated as I change my tools out. So that page is just kind of a running list of all the stuff that I'm currently using. So if you wanna know any of that information, that's the place to go find that out. One of the questions was, how did you know it was safe to leave your job and do this full time? I did not know, because it is not safe. Anytime that you leave something that is stable, a job, and you go to something that is not stable, something that's not consistent as far as income, it's not safe. But safety is often overrated. There's something to be said for going out and trying something, even if it's not safe, even if it doesn't work. I mean, I could totally fail at this. This thing is not guaranteed. And if I fail, what am I gonna do? Well, worst case, I go get another job. It's not the end of the world. My family is not gonna go hungry one way or another because I will do anything I have to do to make sure that doesn't happen. It's never safe to go out on your own, to start your own business, to do your own thing that you wanna do. It's never safe, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it if that's the thing that you're supposed to do. All right, next one is what sort of stuff do you leave out of the videos? Nothing. I mean, occasionally I'll leave out, like if I have to do something multiple times, I'll cut some of it out. And I don't show like the full sanding of things because that would be really boring to watch. So I try to include at least a piece of every single action that's done in every one of my projects so that there's nothing that you're just like, how did he get there? How did that thing exist? I want you to see the steps, everything that happens. I want you to see how it got to the state that it's in when you're watching it in the video. What's the biggest misconception you had between striking out on your own and actually doing it? And I think that means just like switching jobs. The biggest like misconception I had at that point was I thought, hey, I get to make stuff all the time. I'm gonna be making so many videos because that's what all my time's gonna be doing. Well, it turns out that like actually making things and making videos is probably around 20% of my time now. The rest of it is like business stuff and answering email and you know keeping up with just like the logistics of running a very small business and um, 
there's just a lot more to that side of it than I really expected. How did the podcast come together? We're talking about the Making It podcast. Well, um, like I said, go check out our podcast if you've never heard of it. But basically on Facebook, somebody said, this guy named Jeff said, hey, you and Duresta and Pachuto should do a podcast together. And I was like, that'd be awesome. What do you guys think? And they were both like, yeah, let's try it. And then we just tried it and the rest is history. I don't know how it actually happened. We just started doing it all of a sudden. What part of making stuff programming in my previous job left me unfulfilled. Honestly, I was making stuff that I didn't care about. I was making software for IT professionals and it was good software and it was useful to people in that particular situation, but I just didn't care about it. I was not invested in it personally. And so that was unfulfilling for me. That's not a symptom of software development. So if you're in software, don't think I'm saying that. That's a symptom of the job and the particular place that I was in. I just didn't really care so much about what I was working on. Whereas now, man, I'm making video, I care about it because I see that the way some people react to my videos and the projects and the way that people are getting inspired to do things on their own, that's amazing. And that is fulfilling and that's what I wanna chase. That's why I'm doing this now. Do you tie your shoes every time or just slip them on? Slip them on. Do you always know if your projects are going to work out? No, I don't. Um, in fact, a lot of times they kind of don't and I have to figure out how to make them work on camera. So no, I don't know that everything's gonna work out. I do tend to plan a lot ahead of time, so I think I work out a lot of the problems before I actually start, but you never know if stuff's gonna work. And there were a lot of questions that were kind of like this one, where it was basically like, if I'm just getting started or if I'm a hobbyist, what kind of tools do I need to get started? That's a really hard question to answer because everybody wants to make different things, they wanna do it in a different method, and that requires different tools. But the thing that I always tell people is that if you have a circular saw, a drill, and an orbital sander, you can make just about anything. Those cover the basics of like pretty much everything else. I mean, a table saw is just a circular saw upside down in a table. A drill press is just a hand drill on a thing so you can push it up and down. Those three tools will get you really, really far, and the bigger power tools are really just ways to do those same actions more precise, faster, or better. But if you get those three things, you're not spending a whole lot of money and you can build tons of stuff. Where do you find your music that's in the background of your videos? Um, I make all that music. Some people really don't like it, so sorry, but that's all original music. I am a musician and not really in that style, but that's just stuff that I can make pretty quickly to put in the videos. And no, it's not available for download. A lot of people ask about that. Um, maybe I'll do that at some point, but most of them are just loops, not full songs. So I don't think that would be very interesting to download. Are there any projects you have skipped to upload because you failed in the making and did not want to finish? No. Here's the thing. If I make a mistake or if something totally fails, I'm going to make a video about it because that is the truth. That is real when sometimes things just don't work out. Luckily, I've not been in a position to where something has failed so badly that I just like had to stop. I mean, that's not really my personality. I'll change it or I'll figure out a way to make it work. But if that happens, I will post a video about it, I promise. Okay, hey Bob, how do you keep track of your build ideas for videos, any online tools or simple notebooks? I have all the software that I use actually listed on that tools page that I talked about earlier, so you can see it all there. But mainly right now I'm using Evernote to just dump ideas in. It's just like a big notepad and you know, I just put all this stuff. In fact, that's what I'm reading these Q&A out of right now is Evernote. So I put a lot in there. I'm also using Trello, which is a list app and you can create lists and then you can give each thing in the list attributes. And it's really good for me to make a schedule and make uh, keep track of all my ideas and all that stuff. Both of those tools are free too. So go check those out. How long does it take you to make a typical six to eight minute build video? Um, I don't know, it really depends on the thing itself that I'm making, but you know, outside of the actual making and filming, because that's all over the place, it could be like 20 minutes or it could be several days. Outside of that part of it, uh, the editing is usually maybe three or four hours. You got an hour or maybe a little bit more of voiceover. You have like website posts, you have images to create, you have a trailer to put on Facebook. So all that stuff together, I don't know, it's probably 20 or, 30 hours to get a video done. And that's why it's hard for me to actually get other projects going in the background, like longer term projects, because each week is just full of doing a single video. All right, up next, uh, what tips do you have for novices who've never worked with wood but wanna try it after seeing your videos? Just give it a shot. I know that's maybe not very helpful, but really you just have to get started and you will learn what you need to learn to fix problems as you go. Do you like to make stuff? Yes. Do you accept ideas for projects? If so, how and where? Uh, people send them to me on my website and I, I mean, you can send them, but I have a list of things that I'm going to make, things that I need to make. 
and so I probably won't take many suggestions. You're welcome to send them, I mean, who knows. And the next one is actually, how long is your backlog of projects to be made? Honestly, my backlog grows about twice as fast as I'm able to produce videos. So it's pretty much constantly getting bigger, even though I'm taking things off the list. It's really long. How tall am I? Uh, 5'10"-ish? How many things do you make for yourself or customers that you don't show on YouTube? Nothing. I mean, like, my business is content creation. I don't make stuff to sell. I make videos. That's what I'm doing, and that's my purpose in doing all this stuff. So anything that I make in a video, any project, is something that I just want or something we need around the house or something that a friend of mine asked for. And so I don't really, like, make stuff, you know, to sell behind the scenes or anything. It's really all about creating video content for me. Do you make more money doing YouTube than you did with your regular job? No, I took a pay cut to do this and hopefully that's a temporary pay cut. Hopefully I will be able to make as much money as I made before, but I mean, we're fine. We adjusted our lifestyle a little bit because there's a lot of stuff that we pay for and things that we do that are just really not that important. And if you can take all that non-important stuff out of the way, you have a lot less that you need. And so it's not really that big of a deal to take a little bit of a pay cut. And like I said, hopefully that's temporary. Hopefully we'll be able to get back to the salary that I was making before, but if not, we'll be fine. Can you solve a Rubik's cube? I used to be able to do it in like two and a half minutes, but it's been a long time. I should probably figure that out again. Do you enjoy life? Absolutely, of course I enjoy life. I have four amazing kids. I have an amazing wife. I get to make videos for a living. I Life is awesome. Have you ever been to Norway? Nope. Thoughts on getting a laser cutter. Actually, I bought a laser cutter. It just hasn't come in yet. Um, I got one of the Glowforge machines and it's on that tools page if you wanna check it out. And it's a relatively inexpensive laser. So I'm really interested to see uh, what it's like and how I can use it. It was one of those like you fund it ahead of time deals and then they're gonna make them. So I'm not really sure when it's gonna show up. Sometime in the early part of 2016. Will you be doing a shop tour? Yes, very, very soon. Are you able to make videos that don't require tools that some people don't have? I get questions like this a lot, like, can you make videos with tools that I have? Or can you make videos that don't use all the tools that you have? Like, honestly, no. I mean, I, I know everybody doesn't have what I have, you know, at their disposal. But my hope is that you will see something that I do in one of my videos and be inspired to figure out a way to do the same thing. And that doesn't mean that you have to have the same tools. Like I said before, a circular saw and a drill can get you really, really far in making stuff. And a whole lot of what I think it means to be a maker is trying to figure out a way to accomplish your goal with what you have at your disposal. So I don't think I'm ever gonna be somebody who's gonna do like hand tool videos or limited tool videos because that's just not the way I think. I think about the end product and I use whatever is around me at the moment to try to get to that end product. So I, I don't think I really have a good answer for that. What's your real name? I, I can't tell you that, I'm sorry. Are you gonna finish the arcade machine? Yes, it is built. It is on the other side of the door right here. I'm waiting on the artwork for that and it's gonna be in tonight. And then I'm gonna start piecing the whole thing together and it's gonna be finished. The videos for it will start going online in the next few weeks, hopefully. But yes, it is coming, it is almost complete, and I'm really, really excited about it. Do you have plans to do collaborations with other YouTubers? I have one that I'm working on right now, and I would love to do more of those, um, but I don't really wanna do them with other makers. I would rather do them with people that are in different parts of YouTube, you know, like people who do different stuff, because I think that's where the really fun crossover happens. Will you have a meetup in the UK? I would love to. Apparently there's a lot of people that watch my videos that are in the UK, and I would love to do that, but it's really expensive to get there. So if you guys can find like a company that wants me to speak or something, and they could pay to bring me over there, I would love to do that. <laughs> What's your dream car? Uh, probably the Batmobile. What's the biggest challenge you wanna tackle and overcome in 2016? My process. The biggest challenge for me right now is that I have a huge list of things that I want to do and I can't figure out how to do them in the time that I have. And so my biggest challenge this year is trying to figure out how to streamline my process so that I can make more, I can be happier with you know the, the end product, with the video and with the thing that I'm making and just how I can like just really nail that process and make stuff faster and better. And I have no idea how to do that, but that's, that's what this year is about, I think. 
How do you decide what projects you want to do next? A lot of it has to do with timing. Like I'll, I'll start a project, then I'll have to wait on something, and then I'll go to something else to fill my schedule. But really, it's a lot of me trying to keep it different. So I'll try to do something out of wood, and then I'll try to do something out of metal, then I'll try to do something that's electronics, and then I'll try to do something that's wood and metal together so that people stay interested watching and I stay interested because I get to like bounce around from thing to thing a lot. All right, just a couple more, then we're gonna wrap this up. Favorite person at the moment, my wife. What did you do for New Year's? I sat on the couch with my wife. What did you get for Christmas? Um, a PS4. Where do you see yourself in 20 years? Hopefully in the shop. How long have you had your YouTube channel already? I think um, almost three years now, which is just crazy to me. So that's a good place to stop. That's probably more information than you actually wanted to know. But if you still did have a question that you wanted to ask me, Twitter's the best way to do that. Email is really slow, really hard for me to keep up with. Twitter's fast and easy, so get in touch with me there. Thanks for all the questions, guys. I'll be back with a project video next week, I promise, and it's gonna be a woodworking project, kind of. So um, yeah, thanks guys. I'll see you next time.